All right, I'd like everybody to now picture themselves in a typical rail operation where maintenance is completed periodically. And because of that, we have costly failures because trains break down when they should be running. So to cover that, we hold high inventory because we have unpredictable demand. And all of this results in the blame game throughout the supply chain. But change has happened. Our customers have evolved and so have we. We are moving the industry to an as a service model. No longer just a provider of parts, but a complete package. Now I'm going to uh, share an animation here. We have a vision for the rail industry, a condition-based supply chain that involves the seamless management of real-time data and information to deliver increased operational efficiencies and maintenance savings. The use of digital technology will improve the effectiveness of the supply chain and have a positive impact on cost, carbon, the customer and capacity. How does this really work in reality then? We have many different elements in the cyber physical ecosystem that make up the condition-based supply chain. Unipart Rail is the expert sit in the middle, controlling the end-to-end -end supply chain. We use data to enhance maintenance with a high-performing supply chain that results in an increased asset life and availability. And by harnessing the data, we know before an asset fails. We provide this information to our customers and manage the supply chain to deliver the required material to the location that it's needed when it's needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the different elements of the um, condition-based supply chain and give examples of where we're already delivering uh, value for our customers. So firstly, I'll start with condition-based maintenance. As you might imagine, something which is core to the Unipart Rail business, but also critical within Instrumentel. And we see there's a difference between condition-based maintenance and remote condition monitoring, whereby with remote condition monitoring, you're just getting data. For condition-based maintenance, you're getting insight, information that you can act upon and make a difference. So what data do you already have that you can use to, uh, to enable improved decisions? That might be harvesting existing sources such as OTMR data, and using that information to provide alerts to maintenance and operations staff on battery health or engine performance. Or maybe you need to understand how an improved system might be performing. For example, a new sanding unit, whether it will improve braking. By monitoring deceleration and using the same data to inform drivers, you can reduce wheel slip events. And also, how do you know that the uh, OEM recommendations are optimal for performance of, and maintenance. By monitoring engines to identify faults, you can allow for an increased mileage between overhauls. We've looked to increase some engine maintenance by as much as 10% already, and we think we can go further. So much of condition-based maintenance is around harvesting what we already have and using that to provide it to the end user. Within Unipart Rail, we also have real-time supply chain data. We have very strong process expertise, including accreditation, um, but managing data is hard. Managing the relationships takes a lot of time and effort, and making strategic decisions takes time. Unipart Rail have a proven record of delivering to our customers an excellent level of service. But we're taking that another step further through process automation. It allows us to increase the bandwidth of our business and it frees up the humans. We do use APIs and the like, but actually through robotic process automation, we're, uh, we're able to integrate where traditional interfaces just haven't existed in the past. And I'll give you an example of how that all comes together. Firstly, we have here 
an optimized supply chain, which is designed around the customer. We have cloud-based vehicle tracking, which gives real-time uh, information on the delivery to each of our customers and the suppliers. The visualization of the data into information means that everybody is working from the same version of the truth. We use RFID to track multiple products throughout the supply chain and at our customers' facilities. And also the serialization of parts to track materials through a facility so that you know exactly what's been installed where and when. All of this can be applied not just in rolling stock maintenance, but also for infrastructure. So how do we take all that data and make sense of it? At Instrumentel, we use our Knowledge Graph database. This is so that we are set up better to integrate future sources of data. It allows for improved decisions and whether that's pulling in data from timetable adherence, weather patterns or traffic conditions, we're able to take that data and bring it together to make improved decisions by using our machine learning algorithms, predictive analytics. We're teaching the computers to do the hard work. An example here is showing data from a single parameter that has been analyzed and trends have been identified. And you can probably see clusters of events. That's just a single signal monitoring the health of a battery. What if we're putting GPS data over the top of that? other data in terms of the engine, how it's performing. Very soon, it's impossible for the human mind to even visualize what's possible. And so we utilize the machine learning algorithms that we've developed and couple that with our knowledge of the asset itself to determine when events are significant enough that we need to alert the operators, allowing them to make improved decisions on how to manage and run their operation. I'll give another example of how we turn data information. Data is very noisy. What you can see here is 52 signals across three engines on a three car DMU. It would take a lot of time to pull the pertinent information out of this graph, but you can see that there is clearly a lot of data available. We identify the issues and alert those that need to know with only the relevant information. We overlay the analytics with GPS and pick out the specific event that customers need to be aware of. In this instance, that an engine was not coming up to the same RPM as the other two vehicles. So we know that there is a specific problem because they are all controlled by the same notch by the driver. That's an example of where we're taking data and making it actionable, usable information. And we also know where and when it's happened and thus whether any external factors have affected it, such as track gradient, or train loading. So how do we support a condition-based maintenance approach with the supply chain? It will lead to a shift in maintenance towards optimal change out based on material condition as opposed to periodic. And maintenance can then be planned to take place at the optimum moment, ensuring that the asset has maximum availability. But you need a supply chain that can deliver material when and where that's required. An example of us doing this already within Unipart Rail is SmartServe. This is a complete supply chain partnership. We are the single source of supply into a customer and we're able to utilize technology at the point of use and smart materials to allow for enhanced decisions to be made. All that results in on-site, our facility there to support the material requirements of the customer. And we're using things such as vending machine to reduce the need for human resource locally and provides bandwidth, which allows us to plan and prepare, which is much more important than being reactive. Overall, it re increases material availability and it reduces the maintenance cycle time. The end benefit for our customers being just in time, line side delivery of material and optimum maintenance based on the condition. By using the Unipart way and by adapting the data that we have, we provide real-time visualization of everything to our customers. The experience of Unipart Rail is used to make sense of the data and build on the different layers of information there. The goal being that it's understandable in seconds. 
and it's all built with the end user in mind. From the top floor to the shop floor, everybody's getting the same version of the truth, just maybe in a slightly different way. And to do this, we use the best tools that are available. We use Google, and we use different widgets that we've designed ourselves, but it makes it familiar so that people can pick up and use it straight away. A quick example is our Fleet Insight, which enables an operator to view their whole fleet at a high level, where it is and if there are any alerts. If there are anything significant, a vehicle would change to red, and immediately the customer would know that they needed to do something about it. Also, the customer can drill down into the data for each individual train. This is OTMR data for a particular journey, and it's showing signals that are pertinent for that um, individual. This dashboard allows the operator to review vents, locations, signals, and complete historical analysis, all at the touch of a button. By analyzing the wheel slip events on geolocation, we can produce a heat map showing where events happen most. And we can apply filters on the data to understand the duration and the severity of an event, and maybe some other factors so that we can analyze them and improve things such as dwell time at stations. All of this is geared towards providing an optimal operation for the passengers. And all the different components come together into that cyber physical ecosystem. There are different elements where we bring the data together, where we take extra sources of data, provide it via Paradigm Insight, and then motivate and mobilize the supply chain to deliver back to the customer, bringing it all together for what we call the intelligent condition-based supply chain. And the benefits of this are clear. We provide increased asset availability and reliability with less downtime. There's lower maintenance costs through moving towards condition-based maintenance. And improving the supply chain will have a large impact on the four Cs of cost, carbon, the customer, and capacity of the network. And customers have a lower inventory holding, with Unipart Rail holding the inventory and utilizing just in time and only paying for what they use when they use it. All of this is underpinned by the value line statement that we have within Unipart Rail. Thank you very much. Happy to take some questions. Okay, so we've had a question come through to say, how are they sensors fitted to vehicles? So, we sometimes design and build our own specific sensors, uh, but often we uh, procure those and bring our integration specialists in within our teams. We will install those sometimes through um, screwing them into diagnostic ports that sit on assets already, for example, in an exhaust, or we might have to attach them in a, a way. All of this will be agreed with the train operator and the ROSCO to make sure that the right approvals are in place. We've also had another question that's asking how are the sensors are powered. Now we have uh, a few options to use here. We have within Instrumental a um, relatively unique piece of technology that's called inductively coupled telemetry, whereby we use the movement of the um, asset to power the sensors. And that's in places which are very hard to reach. But more often, um, we do utilize uh, wired sensors that are connected to our diagnostic hub. And these are installed on the asset at the edge of the system and pull the data together to transmit by the cloud to our data centers. So we have multiple options in how we power the sensors, whether that be via a wired connection or by a wireless inductively coupled telemetry. We've had another question asked in terms of what, type, what sort of savings can we deliver? We've been targeting improved savings of varying uh, amounts depending on the different application of our systems. One example I can give is for our OTMR harvesting, where we have reduced the time that it takes for the customer to do diagnostics on their train. So when a, a, 
issue is identified, they can target and uh, investigate that quicker. And that saves them time during the uh, maintenance so that they've got everything ready for when the, the train arrives at the depot. Another good example is on our fuel monitoring solution, where we've shown that by improving driver behavior and how they drive the vehicle, we can actually reduce fuel costs by up to 9%, which is quite significant when you think of a full fleet of vehicles all running around, not 24 seven, but a, a large amount of time. A question that's been asked is that given that people already optimize maintenance to reduce material usage and condition-based supply will come at a cost. Does the business case actually stack up? What I'll say is that there have been numerous reports um, and investigations into this. <clears throat> the likes of Gartner have uh, published studies that show condition-based maintenance should realize between uh, 20 and 30% of maintenance time, but it has to be delivered in a collaborative manner with the end users, because undoubtedly there have already been improvements made and each operation has found their own way to be optimal in their maintenance practices. But there's always more to do. And with the cost of sensors coming down and these systems becoming more accessible, it very much is that the business case does stack up. A question has been asked, can Paradigm Insight data be viewed in a mobile phone? Yes, it can. Um, Paradigm Insight is available on any device with an internet connection. <clears throat> it doesn't need a specific app. It runs best on Google Chrome, but we also support the likes of Firefox um, and other browsers as well, including Safari. Okay, are there any more questions? People, anything else they'd like to ask? Okay, here's another one that's come through. Uh, how do we monitor wheel bearings on freight trains where there is no power or allegiance between the bogies. So this is a complicated um, setup and something that there has actually been a recent uh, shift to rail project to fund this specific um, question because freight trains obviously don't have, um, the wagons themselves don't have uh, any sort of power source and there hasn't yet been a proven solution which can harvest energy sufficiently to transmit that data uh, the recording of the data is actually um, done at a very low power rate, but it's the transmission of data which is requires a larger power source. And there hasn't yet been a, a use case where the battery life um, and the energy harvesting allows for a cost-effective solution for uh, freight wagons yet. If you, there are any questions, people are free to contact me. My details are available on the screen here, or visit our website at instrumentel.com. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day.